everyone this is Trisha and welcome to my channel today I'm going to show you how to make this cute little mug rug okay so let me tell you what you're going to need to create the mug rug this size is about six by six inches all right so we're gonna need two contrasting fabrics to create our block that you see here in the front and then of course we're gonna need some fabric for the back so you can choose at least two fabrics or you can choose a third one to use for the back, so that can be completely different. It's up to you, just combine them so they match up. So here I have these two fabrics that I have chosen to create another mug rug. And then I've got some felt here. This felt is completely optional. I've chosen felt because I happen to have some here at home. I do have a quilter's batting as well, but to me, the felt is super inexpensive to create these little mug rugs. They're great for any other little project where you want to give your your item a little bit of body like this so that is why I've chosen that you can completely leave this out and make this a nice just a little soft little fabric if you want but I think it works really good if you put some felt or some batting in the middle of your little rug here okay we're also going to be needing something to measure with you can use your measuring tape of course or a straight edge like this or even the graph if you have a mat board like this for cutting I'm going to be using my rotary cutter and my mat board here with my straight edge, which of course you could use a measuring tape, some pinning and some scissors. And speaking of pins, I've got some pins here so I can pin all my little squares together. I've also got a marking pencil here. This is a fabric marking pencil or it's called a dressmaker's marking pencil. You can use uh, just a regular number two pencil if you want some tailor's chalk or regular chalk or a pen. It doesn't really matter just something to mark with. I'm going to be using my sewing machine to sew all this up so of course I need some thread for that. I don't have, I'm not showing that right here. You could also hand sew all of this if you want to do that and take the time to do so. I've got my little ironing board, my iron, a little bit of water or maybe even some starch if you want to make everything nice and starched up and stiff. So let's go ahead and get started on our project. Alright, so as I said, to create our pattern, we're going to need two contrasting fabrics. This is called a pinwheel block. So this is the design that we're going to create. Alright, so I've got my two fabrics here. I've already ironed them out and I've gone ahead and I've trimmed the two edges here to make sure they're nice and straight. And then I'm just going to fold them in half like that and meet up these two straight edges where I've cut the two fabrics because we're going to cut out four inch squares. So four by four, and I want to be able to uh, cut them at the same time, and I also want to be able to see the lines on my grid because this is a small board. So just line up all your little edges. Okay, so now I've got them here all lined up, and I'm going to go on the four inch line and cut along there so I can have these two strips right here. course you'll cut them with your scissors if that's what you have uh, to cut with. I highly recommend a rotary cutter and a little mat so if you can invest in that that's awesome because you could use this for a lot of little projects and sometimes a rotary cutter makes it easier when you want to cut something straight or when you have a lot to cut. Okay so here we go I'm um, now I'm going to cut four inches like that so I'm going to cut this fold out where I folded them. We need separate pieces. We don't need a fold. And then here at the other four inches. Now that I've got these four pieces here, I'm going to separate them. I've got one, two, three, four. And as you can see, I have two of each. All right. So now we're going to take two of the... Uh, two of the squares making sure the pretty side is facing upward and then we're going to take the contrasting fabric and we're going to face it downward so their two right sides are facing each other line them up sometimes ironing the two pieces together helps to ha keep them from moving around so that's what I'm going to do put them on my board here bring it over I don't know why this helps, <laughs> why it works, but it does. It helps me to line them up and also when I lift them up, they won't uh, move around. So this is just a little tip that works for me. You might want to try it. 
Okay, all right, so now that I've got these two pieces all nice and ironed and they're not going to move around on me, I need to mark the centers. So I'm going to go from one corner to the other corner, and this is why it's nice to have a straight edge. Anything that you have, any ruler that you have with a straight edge, whether it's metal, plastic, or whatever you have, or wood, and then we're going to mark it from corner to corner with our pencil or marker and we're going to do that to both of them okay all right so I've made a center mark here on each one I don't know if you can see it I'll hold this one up as well maybe you can see that pencil line now okay so now that I've marked it I can go ahead and pin so that it doesn't actually move on me once I get on the sewing machine or if I decide to do it by hand, which you could, take a little longer, but you can do it. Just make nice little tight stitches. Okay, from this center line, I want to sew off to the side, to the right side, quarter inch, and then I'm going to sew another line off to the left side, a quarter inch this way. I'm going to do the same to this one as well. So we're just going to pretend this is the quarter inch marking or the stitch that I have made just to give you a little visual. Okay, you see the center line marked with a pencil? We're not going to sew on that center line with a pencil. We're going to sew a quarter inch to each side, right where those pins are. Okay? So, sew right here. And we're going to do the same thing on this one. And we'll be back. Alright, so I'm back and I've sewn on either side of that blue line that I marked. So you can see that there's two stitch lines. And then I go ahead and take it and I iron them. And the reason that you do that, it just kind of seals that stitch into the fabric. So just press down on it. I had already ironed one of them. Okay, so now that we have that, we're going to take our straight edge, and right where that line that we marked, we're going to cut right there. So with your cutter or scissors, cut right in half, just like that. And do the other one. I could do it this way, it's the same thing, but I have my little mark here, so why not? That reminds me that I have to cut it right in the center. And there we go. We've got two nice pieces. All together we have four, so we can create our pinwheel. But before we do that, we're going to take them over to the little ironing board again. We're going to open these up. And iron them. Now, when you're ironing these... Uh, quilters of blocks, you don't want to move your iron around like that on them. Okay, don't move your iron around. Just press it. You see me moving it, but I'm lifting it each time. So just press it down like that. And that is because when you swish it around like that, because you're warming up the fabric, it causes it also to be able to be stretched out, you know, moved around. And then you kind of lose the squareness of your block. So try not to do that, which I just kind of did. It's just a habit. So try not to do that. Okay, so I've our ironed open all my little squares. And now what I want to do is I want to cut off these little, little bits here on the edge, little dog ears. So I want to cut those off or trim them off. Okay, so now all the little dog ears have been cut off. The corners, we're going to get our pins ready. Now we're going to create this pinwheel, but... I have this pinwheel that I can look at and do the pattern very easily, but you're not going to have this already made, so you're going to be like, oh my gosh, I can't remember how I'm supposed to do this. So what you're going to do is take any of the, any of the fabric, I'm going to choose the blue one, and I'm going to create a triangle like that. See? A little triangle. So when I put them together, there's a square. So that's a nice little design you can use for your mug rug by the way that's a nice little design but I want that pinwheel so what I'm going to do and this is a little trick that I just learned for myself I don't know if anybody else has discovered it or uses it so I'm not trademarking it but <laughs> I discovered this was the easiest way to do it is to put it together like this so you have one of your fabrics as a solid square in the middle so then you're going to take the left side of it you know you're going to be looking at it take your left side and put it down to the bottom. 
So take the left side, turn it around, so now it's at the bottom, as, as you're looking at it. Left side, turn it around to the bottom. Left side, turn it around to the bottom. And look at that. We have our pinwheel design. There we go. Okay, so now we want to put all these little squares together. We're going to start off by putting pairs together. So these two are going to get sewn together. So you're just going to take it, flip it over onto the other one, just facing it like that and pin along the edge that's going to get sewn so you don't forget. Take this one, turn it over to the other one. This is the edge that we want to sew, so we're going to pin it. So again, we're going to do a quarter inch seam, whether it's with our sewing machine or if you're going to do it by hand. If you're going to do it by hand, I highly suggest that you go ahead and mark it with your pencil so that you have a nice little line to follow. Make it easy on yourself. So let's take this over to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew it and I'll be back. Okay, so now I've sewed the two little squares that I created together. So we want to iron that. First, iron down the seam and you can pop them open and iron that down. Let me spray a little bit of water. Now, this is where uh, moving the iron around can loosen up the fabric once you've wet it, so be careful. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've ironed them, made them nice and flat. So I'm going to take the corner, The this is going to be my little center corner where all of them kind of meet up together. So this one has to be turned around this way. Okay, so here they are. So now I'm going to put this one, I'm going to flip it over on top of that other one. I want to make sure that my center seam here matches up with this one so just get it in there and make sure that this little little seam here folds this way and then the one at the top folds the other way so you don't have so much bulk when you sew that so just pin it right there and then your ends and this is where you're going to realize like oh this isn't all that straight one of them is a little bit bigger than the other as long as your centers are matching and I kind of matched them up on the other side too and I want to make sure that, that it's all lined up together I'm going to sew only on one side okay I'm just going to put it together like that you can pin it as much as you want or if you're fine just holding it you know you're going to get it right or pin it when you get it to the sewing machine all right so now that I've got that I'm going to do another quarter inch seam only on one side, right where I met all the little points together, okay? Okay, so now I've pinned all that together to create my block. So I'm going to iron that and then pop it open. Alright, so here we have our block already ironed. So now this is where you're going to look at it and decide, well, is it nice and pretty? Are the edges all meeting up? If they're not, this is where we're going to use our grid, and that's why the grid, I recommend that you get that. So line up your, your seam here with this grid, and then you can use your straight edge, which also has lots of lines on it. You just want to measure, you just want to line it up with one, with one line. You don't have to worry about the one going this way. Just line this one up first and then find the very, very edge on one side and get as close to the edge as you can using one of the lines here and one of the lines on my straight edge. I line that up so I know that it is all at the right angle. And then I get it as close as I can. Any additional fabric that sticks out, I can trim it off. And that's what you can do if you want to square it off really nicely. You don't really have to worry about this with this little mug rug. It's okay because we're only using one block. But let's say if you're making a blanket or something bigger uh, and you want to make sure that they're all aligned very well, then you want to square it off and that's how you do it. So I'm going to do this one just for the purpose of showing you. Okay, so now that I've aligned this and I've cut these nice and square, now I want to use this other seam line and do the same to these other two edges. 
Okay, so if you wanted to continue making more blocks and make them all exactly the same size, what you're going to want to do is you want to measure the first block that you started with and then make sure that you cut and trim the rest of them after you form them into a block to be all the same. Okay, now that we have it like this, we can cut out the part that we're going to have in the middle which is going to be our felt, or like I said, you can use a uh, quilter's batting. So I'm just gonna cut a square out of the felt, and I'm just gonna follow a line along, you know, the block that I already have made. Uh, I would recommend using the straight edge so that you don't cut into your block by accident. Okay, there we go. Well, a little bit of the felt didn't get cut here, no problem. All right, so now we've got a little felt square. Now I'm actually going to go a little bit closer and trim off a little bit more. You don't have to really worry about that. You can trim it off after you've sewn it, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it now. Okay, and I've cut this. Yeah, let's square off that little corner there. All right, there we go. Okay, so now that I've got that, we're gonna keep it like that. Now, I want a fabric for the back of it. And I think I'm gonna use a blue one because I really like the blue. Like I said, you could use a contrasting fabric, maybe even a solid would look nice. So now I wanna cut a square the same size. And I can just put this on top of here. Wait, this little corner over here is way straighter, so I'm going to use this side. And again, I'm going to use my straight edge here instead of just cutting it. And I'll align it over here. I can remove this. And let's see. Yep. There we go. Okay, so now that I've done that, you're going to take this with the right side facing your block right side, and you're going to get it on there. Oops, let's put it on there nice and straight. And now you're going to want to pin it down so that you can sew around this, but you're going to leave an opening, and you're going to leave at least a three inch opening. So I've got here three inches, so I'm going to mark three inches, another three inches. So I know not to sew right here. And then I'll just pin the corners to let me know that that's... And I'm putting my pins like this because this reminds me, oh, this is the opening. All right. So now you'll start here, go all the way around, quarter inch seam, and end right here. And then you can bring it over and then after you've sewn it and turn it out. But I'm going to do something a little different. Let me remove these pins. I am going to create what I like to call a little pillow cover. So let's cut another one of this square. Now if you don't have a lot of fabric to use, do it the way that I just showed you. But this is another way that I like to do and I'll show you why later the options that you have in doing it like this and why I like it regardless of what option I have. Okay, so I'm just going to cut another piece of fabric, the same size. It doesn't have to be exactly, it could be a little bit shorter, it's fine, but I'm going to do that. All right, so now that I've got two, I'm going to take this here. All right, so I'm going to take the first one that I cut, put it back on here, but now I'm going to fold down, and I'm folding down about an inch and a half. Let me measure this so I can see. That's about an inch and three quarters, an inch and a half. Okay, so I'm going to fold it there. I'm going to iron that down so it doesn't move on me. And make sure that's the first piece that you do. That goes when you turn it around. This is going to be on the outer layer. Okay, so make sure that folded edge is placed down first. And then you take the other one and you place it on top here. And you're going to fold it also about the same amount. Okay? But you want to make sure that it is overlapping that other one. So about the same amount. Fold it. Now, this 
you don't have to leave it on a fold. You can just cut it off. So if you didn't have enough fabric, like let's say you had it the width, but you didn't have the length, a little strip of fabric that you can cut as long as it goes beyond this fold, at least an inch over is fine. So this could be cut off or it could just be folded like that. I'm going to leave it folded. There we go. Leave a nice little fold. There we go. All right. So now I'm going to pin this down so it doesn't move on me. I'm going to go ahead and sew all the way around and I don't have to leave any opening anywhere because right here is going to be my opening okay and this is what I prefer to do so let me go ahead and sew this up all the way around a quarter inch seam and I'll be back all right so whether you use this uh, idea that I have or if you want to use just the one piece and sew around leave an opening it is now time to turn it around to the right side so I'm going to push a little corner and I'm actually going to use my scissors. My scissors have a nice little rounded tip, so it's perfect for this type of thing here. Push the corners out. I like to do the corners first before I try to fix the rest of the item. Okay, I did iron it by the way. After I sewed it, I did iron it down to, you know, seal in those seams that I did. Okay, so now that it's here, now I want to iron it again because, you know, turning it over kind of wrinkles up the fabric a little bit. And there we go, you guys. We have a nice, nice mug rug here. But what about that opening? Okay, I'll tell you about the opening. We can seal it. We can sew it by hand just like we would if we had the opening over here. The reason that I like it like this is because it gives me a nice edge, a nice sealed edge like that. And then I can just blind stitch this down or even use that uh, double uh, sided um, like hem tape. You can just put a little strip in here, that, the kind that you can just iron down. That'll seal it. But I also like to leave it open and I'll explain that why in a little bit. First, what I want to do is I want to do a top stitch all the way around the edge. I've done it on this one. See the top stitch? So I want to do it for this one as well. Now after you've done the top stitch, you can choose to sew down the center as well and I've done that with this one so you can see that and as you can see this also seals in the opening so there's no opening now I can't get in there because I have sewn and because I have sewn uh, because I folded this more than an inch I did it an inch and a half when I sew down the center that's going to capture both of these fabrics so it's going to seal it okay so if you don't want that opening you can sew it that way and do this to give it sort of a quilted look if that's what you want well you can just leave it plain like this okay and then just hand stitch that opening it's not that important to close it it's just a little mug rug okay so I'm going to go ahead and top stitch this and then I'm going to sew the center and I shall be back okay so I have sewn around on my quilt block I did the edge and then I also did the center. Now when I sewed the center, I didn't start at the very end over here. I started where I had done this stitch line. I sewed from there across to the other part. I didn't go over it, so I didn't sew all the way to the end when I did both lines. Okay? Another thing that I failed to mention, uh, besides telling you when you stitch the center here to start at the line here, uh, is before you turn it over, you want to trim off the little corners okay so let's just say this is still facing uh, you know the wrong side here's where I stitched it so right here right make sure you don't cut that little corner cut that just trim that little corner off okay so we'll pretend this is that corner just for the sake of being able to cut it we're gonna trim off the corner and you make sure that where it's sewn here that you cut a little bit after that and just trim off that little edge so you don't get so much bulk in your little corners. Now, that little bulk is, there's nothing wrong with it. It actually makes it, you know, kind of neat because it keeps things in there, if you will. But look, just compare it to this one. This one's a little bit smoother. It's flat. Down here. Compared to that one. So, you make your choice of what you want to do. Okay? All right, so let me show you some other things that I've done with the same idea and why I like to leave the little opening there. 
All right, everyone, so I've completed my mug rug. So here's one of them, the one that I had already made. That fits perfectly with my nice big mug. Here's the one that I made that you saw me do. And this fits perfectly with my little saucer and teacup. I like the idea of this because I have a collection of teacups and saucers and I have, they're all different. So I think it would be a great idea to make these all different as well so that then I can have them for my little tea party whenever I can have one again. But isn't that a wonderful idea? I think it would also make a great gift to give these to someone. You can give them one maybe for Mother's Day or make them a set of two, three, or four if you want. Now, if you feel like these are too big and you want to go with a coaster size, instead of cutting the squares uh, four inches, cut them at three inch, three by three, and that will make you a four inch coaster. So let me show you that size. This is a typical size of a coaster, so it's four inches, and obviously it's it'll fit a, a cup this size or something a little bit smaller, or even a glass. So if that's what you want. And you want to make a set of four, six, or whatever, however many you want to make, and then give that to someone as a gift. It is perfect. Now, I want to show you something else because I was talking about leaving the back open on them and I'll show you why I like that opening as well. It's because on this little one I decided to make it into a little sachet that I could hang somewhere. And I could actually put some scented oils on it, but I don't really want to stain this with some scented oils. So I have the opening here so that I can grab a cotton ball or some tissue paper or another little piece of fabric, uh, anything really. And then I can just take whatever scents or oils I want to use. I have this one that smells like lemon. It's very nice. And then I can just slide that into my little opening back here to the little pocket. And I've spread out the cotton ball so that it wouldn't be all bulky in there. Okay, the other thing I might want to do is I might want to let that dry up a little bit before I put it in there. Okay, so there we go. So now I can make sure that uh, I'm... I can remove it easily, and if I can want to put some potpourri in there, I can do that. Of course, I could just spray it itself, and it would make a great little uh, sachet, a little scent. You could hang this by your car's vent, uh, just tuck it in anywhere into a drawer, or hang it just somewhere where you walk into a room so that you can smell that. Now, you could also do this in a much bigger scale and make some placemats. Use the same idea, but what you want to do is maybe make four of these blocks first, Put them all together and then cut the, the felt and then the lining or the, the back part of the fabric to enclose it. And then you could have some nice little placemats. I also went ahead and went a little bit bigger and I made this a bigger one. This mug rug is great for my huge mug which fits perfectly fine on this one. But also on this one it would also work great for a little plate or something. Uh, this one I cut four and a half inch squares. So it made a six by... Six and a half by six and a half. This one is six inches, by the way, and this one is four inches. So three inches for a four, four inches for a six, four and a half for a six and a half. Okay, but I also added a little loop to this because I thought it would make a great little pot holder, you guys. So what do you think of that? I think it's really cute. I can have this uh, opening closed or shut. But what I like about this little pot holder, and maybe this is just the age that's showing in me, <laughs> is that you could actually use it to maybe hide some cash in there. You know, hide it from the kids. They won't know. It's hanging there. They don't know there's something there, maybe some change that you've been collecting. Just toss it in there. Of course, um, when I put my little loop on there, I wasn't paying attention to where the, the opening was. I'd actually want my loop over here so that my opening is like this rather than underneath. Okay, so just keep in mind, keep an eye on that when you do that. So I think it's a great idea. So you guys, I am going to give myself a big old thumbs up. And I hope that you too will give me a big old thumbs up. Leave a nice comment down below. Let me know what you think of these ideas. Uh, will you be making a mug a rug? <laughs> and what would you do different? Let us know. Give us your thoughts and your ideas and share your tips with everyone else so they can read the comments and uh, be thankful for you sharing as well. Anyway, thank you to everyone who has been subscribing. If you haven't already done so, please hit that little red subscription button and after that please hit the notification bell so you get notified of when I put up videos which is twice a week now and once in a while I add in a vlog or I think I'm going to add a little extra craft video this week and that is it everyone share on your social medias and as always 
Enjoy.